Okay, so I made progress with my eight weight painting. It is starting to look good to me. All I did was straight weight painting with one small exception. If I go to pose mode for the generated rig, I did change the end of the action range to seven. So I want even less rotation for this cuff bone. I also feel like a little bit more pronounced rotation of the knee bone uh, might look better. It would give me better deformation in the knee area. And another thing that I could improve is to add some uh, scaling for this calf bone. And it will scale in this direction. And this will help me preserve the volume of the calf a little bit more. For the thigh area, we did paint a lot of weights on the top of the leg and that kind of preserves the whole volume of the leg. But here, some volume I think is lost. So if we add this sideways scaling of the bone, I think that will enhance the feeling of squashing of the muscle. So let's go to the metric and try to create those things. You can support CG Dive by purchasing this course or some of the exclusive courses on academy.cgdive.com. Subscription is also available. Slash to isolate it. Pose mode. Now I want to go to frame 10 for the knee, rotate it a little bit further like that, and then press I. Let's get rid of the king sets. Press I and choose rotation. The other thing I want to fix is the calf bone. So I decided that the deformation, the rotation that I have at frame seven is perfect for me. So I'm going to go to frame seven, press I and choose rotation. That will create a rotation keyframe. Then in the timeline, I'm going to select this frame on frame seven, Select it, press G, and move it over to frame 10. And that will create exactly the rotation that I wanted. Now I'm going to go back to frame 1, press I, and choose scaling. Then go to frame 10, and choose the scale gizmo. And in global mode, I'm still often confused by the way the gizmos work in Blender 2.8 and 9 series. Here I have the orientation set to global, but I still don't get global orientation of this gizmo. I have to go over here to the gizmo settings and choose global, and then the scale, and then switch to selection, and that will give me global orientation. I'm really confused by that. But anyway, let's scale on the x-axis to about this much, and then press I and choose scaling. And now when I play the animation, it will be well, it will rotate and also scale a little bit on the x-axis. So I got a scale of about 1.5 or so. I can always adjust it later if I need to. Let's do the same for the bone that controls the upper leg. So go to frame 1, I scaling, and then go to frame 10. Stretch it a little bit on the x-axis, not too much, about 1.25 or so so less than the calf, and then press I and scaling. Now let's look at the graph editor. My rotation is in linear interpolation, whereas the scaling still has this Bezier curve to it, but I think that will work well. I only did these uh, changes for the left side, so let's go to edit mode, make sure x-axis mirror is disabled, Select all of these bones and delete them. And then select these bones on the left side and symmetrize them. And everything will be set up correctly. I can go out of local mode and generate. I'm going to switch to the legs action. Here I see a problem with my mesh. And that is because I generated the rig at frame 10, where, where there is some sort of animation, the animation that I use for the action constraint. So I can either undo or I can just go to the meta rig, move to frame zero and click generate again. And everything will be fixed now. 
Now I'm going to choose my legs action. And something that you, you'll notice is that every time we regenerate the rig, this calf hamstrings action is being duplicated. We get one more copy of it. That is because this action is being copied to the generated rig every time we press generate. But you don't have to worry about that. Uh, all of the copies that are not needed anymore are marked with zero at the front, as you'll see. And that means that when you save and then load your uh, file again, these actions will disappear and your file will be clean again. That reminds me, however, that it is a good idea to save the original calf action in the meta rig. So let's go to, to the meta rig. And over here for the calf hamstrings action, click the fake user icon. I don't have to regenerate, I'll just hide the meta rig for now and work with the generated rig. Apply the legs action. And let's see at frame 400 what we get. Let's see it from the front view as this leg bends and the calf gets closer to the hamstrings. See how this calf expands. In my opinion, that is very nice. So I'm going to keep it. The upper leg also expands a little bit in the X direction. And yeah, generally I like this. I'm going to keep it and I'm just going to paint a little bit more weights and see if I can improve this uh, deformation just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to call this area done. You can always spend more time on the weight painting and other fine tuning and try to get better deformations, but this looks good to me. When you work with armatures, Blender has one very, very cool modifier, and that is the corrective smooth. So let's select the character, go to the modifiers and choose smooth corrective. Here's the, the effect that we get with Smooth Corrective. This modifier basically finds areas of your mesh that are being distorted a lot, in this case by the armature, and then it applies smoothing only in these areas. It is a very, very powerful tool. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that it only works in Blender. So if you're going to export this character to a game engine or something like that, then the effect of the corrective smooth won't carry over to the other software. So generally I keep corrective smooth off and I try to get as good deformations as I get with just weight painting. And then I apply it at the end to add a final bit of smoothing to the deformations. The effect of this modifier is controlled by the factor and repeat. Factor controls how strongly the modifier is applied. So zero basically means the same as turning the modifier off. And one is the maximum effect of this modifier and repeat acts as a multiplier. So if one iteration is not enough, and by the way, switching repeat to zero is again the same as turning the modifier off. And so if one iteration is not enough, you can increase the repeat factor. If you increase it a lot, you'll start to get weird results. But generally something between one and five will improve the look of your deformations. So in this case, I'm going to set factor to one and repeat to around two. And then I'm going to turn the modifier off because I still have to paint uh, more weights and I don't want to be distracted by the effect of this modifier. But every now and then I'm going to turn it on and see how things look with the modifier. Okay, let's move on. In the next part, we're going to improve the deformations of the glutes or butt. Let's do it. That's it for this chapter. 
Please like, subscribe, and check out our other projects, academy.cgdive.com and addons.cgdive.com.